In this video, we're going to be looking at an example of setting HTTP only cookies with PHP. Now, what this means is that once we do set an HTTP only cookie, as long as the browser that we're using supports this, which most do now, we cannot then access or the client can then not access these cookies via JavaScript. And that's really important in also protecting against XSS attacks. So we'll look at an example of setting a cookie normally just with the basics of the set cookie function in PHP. And then we'll go on to look at how we can do this properly. So if we open up this cookies.php file, I have this open in my browser at the moment, we're not doing anything. And we also have the PHP manual to hand so we can see the arguments we need to pass through to this set cookie function. So normally what we would do is choose an expiry. So I'm going to be using the date time object for this. And I'm going to say, well, I want this to expire in one week. Then what we're going to do is use the set cookie function and we're going to set a key. So for example, I'll just call this key and then we have a value. I'm just going to call this value for now, just as an example. And then we need the timestamp that it expires at. So all we do is we say get timestamp from the week variable there, which is that date time object. And this is what we'd normally do. So let's take a look at how this works. I'm going to hit enter and you can see that in my developer tools, in my resources tab and under the cookies, you can see that we have the key and the value for this cookie. Great. So an XSS attack, we have a video on this in this, in this security series. So you can go ahead and watch that if you haven't already. But essentially what this means is that any script that may accidentally, accidentally execute as part of some kind of an attack will have access to document.cookie, which is this command here. And you can see that that results in key equals value. Now this could be information like a uh, remember me token, which persists a user session. It could really be anything, but the point is we don't want uh, anyone to access this and we want to limit the ability to access this as much as possible. So what we're going to do then is we're going to get rid of this command and we're going to start this again. I'm going to go and get rid of the cookie. So I'm just going to delete that and let's go and refresh the page so we can start again. So this time around, what we're going to be doing is the same thing. So we still have the key, we still have the value and we still have the expiry. So get timestamp. But this time what we're going to do is I'm going to set a couple of additional options. This is the path. Then we have the domain, which we're going to set to null. We also have HTTP secure as well. So if we go to here, we can see secure equals false. We're not going to worry about this too much. This is for uh, transferring over HTTPS, but we're going to ignore this for now. And we're just going to assume that whatever we are storing in a cookie, it shouldn't really be read anyway. And the last option we're going to set to true, which is if we go to the manual HTTP only. So let's go and hit enter and you can see that the same cookie value has been created, but you can see now that this HTTP column has a tick by this uh, cookie. So now let's go and try the document.cookie JavaScript uh, again, and you can see this time we get absolutely nothing. However, what we can do is we can still read this same value on the server side because it's being sent with the HTTP request. So we can still say echo cookie key and we get the value that we've stored in that cookie. So next time you're setting cookies, use the HTTP only option to make sure that you are fully protected against XSS attacks, making sure that the cookies can't be read. 